OMG, can we say finally? Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm Patrice and we're just going to dive right into it. If this is your first time here, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. If you are a returning subscriber or visitor, hey y'all, welcome back. So y'all, Cricut has finally updated their print then cut settings and guess what? We are no longer bound by nine and a quarter by six and three quarters of space that we need to use. They have increased the capacity of printing and cutting with their machine. Now, you can't print and cut larger if you're using a standard size paper. You will need to get larger sheets of paper and hopefully your printer can cut larger than the standard size right so the largest paper that you can print and cut larger with is an 11 by 17 and well yeah well you can do an a3 which is 11 and a half by 16 and a half or 16.7 something like that you guys will see it in the video but i'm just letting you guys know this is a game changer and i'm so excited that Cricut has made these changes because that is the one thing that always comes up and many questions that I always get as far as why hasn't Cricut updated their print and cut settings. There's so many different machines coming out with larger print and cut capacities. And so now Cricut is back in the game. And I will always say that this particular machine, the Cricut cutting machines, and the Cricut Design Space software is very user friendly, very beginner friendly. And so I'm really excited about this change. So today, that's what we will be focusing on. We are going to just print our very first print and cut image that's larger than what we're used to. Now, if this is your first time hearing of print and cut, your Cricut cannot print out a image. Your printer will have to print out the image. So the print portion, requires a printer and the cut portion requires a Cricut. So that's what we are going to be doing. We are going to print out an image on our sublimation printer. It's a converted Epson EcoTank 15,000 and we are going to be printing out an 11 by 17 inch piece of paper and we are going to try to get that image as large as possible on that sheet and we are going to get it cut out. So in addition, we are going to be printing this shirt and this is the actual shirt that I made. It is a 100% cotton shirt and we are going to be doing a sublimation hack where we are going to actually print out this image and we are also going to cut out some clear HTV from Heat Transfer Warehouse. A link to everything that I use will be listed below in the description, but y'all, let's get into it. Okay, y'all, so now we're inside of Cricut Design Space and we need to make sure that we are in the beta version. And to access the beta version, you're going to select your drop down menu next to home. Once you select that, you are going to head down to settings and select settings. Then under the general tab, it will list a few options for you to switch. So for saving for online, your language, and now, for application experience. So application experience, you need to be in the beta version and not the live version. So if you select beta version, you will be able to access the larger print than cut settings that are now available in Cricut. If you switch over to load type, you will be able to adjust your paper that you're going to be using for print than cut. And here you have all of the different paper sizes that now accommodate the print then cut settings, okay? So initially I was gonna start out with the 11.7, .7, which is an 8.3, but we are just going to use an 11 by 17 because that I have that size in sublimation paper. So once you select beta, we are simply going to select done. And now we are going to head up to make a new project. Now that we're here, we need to upload our design and we got this design from off of Etsy. 
All right, this is the design that we'll be using, but I will walk through the steps of uploading it. So we are just simply going to click upload image. You're going to select browse, and then you want to access the file that you downloaded and ours is in our download folder. And so I'm going to select the file super teacher and I am going to select the complex image type and we are going to select continue. We will be using this as a print then cut. All right, so this looks pretty good. The background has been already removed and I am just going to select apply and continue because we don't need to alter anything. Now that we have it uploaded, it gives you the option to print then cut or cut the image. We are going to select the print then cut selection and then once we get inside we will then convert it to a cut image also and so i'm going to select upload now that it is uploaded we are just simply going to select the image that we uploaded and click add to canvas okay now that it is in canvas i am going to shrink the screen size i am not adjusting the actual image i am just selecting the reduce screen size button that's at the bottom you can reduce it or increase it and i'm just selecting to reduce it so that everything can fit onto one screen so the size that this is right now we show this at a 16.4 by 17 Point forty four inches so we know that that's kind of large and if you've ever done print and cut in Cricut you know that you could not get anything larger than six and three quarters by nine and a quarter all right so here we have our notification button and so let's select this over here in the layers panel because it is highlighted in red so we want to select that and see what it's saying and it says image is too large the image is too large for an 11.7 inch by 16.5 inch paper and they detected that the max size for this particular paper is a 10.63 inches wide by 11.31 inches high okay so you can auto resize the image or you can change the paper size now if you get this you want to just select make sure you have the correct paper selected I already have the A3 paper selected, but in order to do that, like let's say if you have an eight and a half by 11 and you want to increase that size paper that you're using, you will need to tell Cricut which paper size that you will be using. And right here, this is where you would do it, okay? And so I already have my paper size selected. And then let's see what auto resize will size the image as. Okay, so auto resize sized it to the maximum size that it could be, and that is a 10.64 by 11.32, and that's if I'm using the A3 paper size. Okay, and so that size actually looks pretty good. I am ready to get ready to uh, print this and cut it, but for today's project, we are going to be using sublimation along with clear HTV. Or transparent HTV and so I will need to select or make another cut file right so I'm just going to select the image we are then going to duplicate it because we need it to be the same exact size and right now we have two of the same images what I am going to do next is I am going to turn this into a basic cut file so this is going to be my print and cut so this is going to print onto my printer and then this i am just going to use this to cut the file so now let's go ahead and let's change this to a basic cut and so under operation i am simply going to head under cut and select basic and then that makes it into a cut file. So once we get ready to actually press this, we are going to cut this with the Cricut. And then once we print this out, this will go perfectly on top. Okay, so let's head to make it and get this done.
Now that we have Make It selected, we will be using the Cricut Maker 3 and we will be using a mat for our pin thin cut. I want to make sure I go ahead and mirror it now and I'm not going to worry about mirroring it once we go into the print dialog box. And so we have it mirrored and that looks pretty good and we are going to get ready to cut. Now remember we have two different cut settings or two different projects or artboards to cut. So the first one we're going to do a print and then we are going to cut this out so that we can place it on top of the vinyl correctly. And in the bottom that is going to be for our transparent HTV. Okay, so now that we have it mirrored, the material size is 11 by 17, and I did go ahead and change that material size to 11 by 17 instead of the A3 size. Now we are going to click continue. Now that we are here, we're going to send it to printer, and we want to adjust the system dialog options. So I'm going to leave the add bleed on, but I'm going to select use system dialog and then we are going to click print. Now, when you click print, your dialog box is going to come up behind your main Cricut app and you're just going to bring it down and here is your print dialog box. Okay, so we are going to adjust the settings and in printer options, I am just going to select print settings. We're going to change the media media type to pre and presentation mat. And then I'm going to select best quality. And you always, well, I'm not going to select mirror image. See, I almost selected mirror image, but it's already mirrored. So if I select mirror image now, it's just going to flip it to the correct way. So I'm not going to select mirror image. Then we are going to, and it's very important to make sure that it cuts correctly, that you mirror your image inside of Cricut, inside of the Cricut Make It area. Don't mirror it when you're selecting your print options. All right next, we're going to select advanced settings. I'm going to change the mode to Adobe RGB. Leave that gamma at 2.2. And now we are ready to print. So we are going to select the device and of course, like I said before, we're doing the Maker 3. And once this prints out, we are going to get ready to cut it. So the cut settings that we're going to be using today, I'm simply going to use the paper, the 20 pound paper setting. And here we have it right here. And we're going to select done and we are going to head over to our Cricut. Before heading to our Cricut, we need to get our printed sublimation image off of our Epson EcoTank 15000 and it's looking really good. All right, y'all, so we are all done printing our image and this is what it looks like. I did switch to the 11 by 17 sheet of paper and when I did that, it did adjust the size a little bit just so that it could fit within the boundaries of the registration marks and this is what we have so once it comes out of the printer you don't want to cut it you don't want to do anything that would jeopardize your registration marks because your printer or your Cricut will need it so today I would prefer to use a light grid mat so if you're not using an 11 by 17 I would definitely just say use the light grip Cricut mat but since I'm using a 11 by 17, I'm going to use a 12 by 24 standard grip mat because I don't have a larger light grip mat. And so I don't, usually I'll braid the material down with the brayer and make sure that it's on there, but I'm not going to do that for this because I really don't want it to really stick too much to the cutting mat. And that's what I'm a little bit worried about. So... We're going to hope that it does it. And I'm just trying to make sure there's no air pockets or anything under the paper. And this light press works just good. Like you don't have to overdo it. All right, so let's get ready to place this into the Cricut. So now we're at the Cricut and we're ready to place our cutting mat into the machine. 
too loaded. So what it's going to do next is it's going to begin reading the registration marks. So you'll see your carriage and it'll be like a little light shining down on it. Just reading those registration marks so that it knows exactly where to cut. Press play or go. This is your machine reading. All right, so it's all done, and we are just going to remove it from the mat. And I want to show you what that bead does. So if you see, look closely, you can see the cut. And so the bleed just gives it a little bit of extra ink around your edges so that your print then cut is a lot more accurate. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and remove the sheet from the mat. And I am flipping it over to help me do it. And I'm just lightly peeling it away. As you see, it's coming up easily. I do prefer to do this with a light grip mat. And then you just kind of bend it. And that is going to help me pop it off a lot easier. And so to remove the image, and you kind of want to do this with an image that's not in pieces, but it can be done if you have to do piece it together. All right, and so here is our design, all cut out larger than what we've ever been able to do with a Cricut. Some areas that had like intricate cutting in between that kind of snagged a little bit, but for the most part, I am very pleased with this cut. Now we're going to get ready to cut our vinyl and today we're going to be using this vinyl. It's a clear vinyl that can take sublimation and I got this from Heat Transfer Warehouse. It is Ultimate Print Soft and the number on it is 4034. So we're going to get ready to cut this. Alright guys, so now we're going to get ready to place the 4034 Clear HCV onto our cutting mat and you want to make sure that you place the mat side onto your cutting mat and we will be using the regular Cricut iron-on setting to get this done and make sure that you mirror it okay. 
Now we're at our Cricut Maker 3 and we're ready to get this cut out. Remember to make sure you mirror your image when you're cutting your HTV and make sure that you use the iron-on setting if you're using this material. All right, so we're all done. And it appears as though it cut it good, but we need to weed it. All right, so let's see how this weeded. And we are just going to try to snatch up a piece of it, and I am leaving it on the mat just so that we can see. All right. So it looks like it we did pretty decent. So I'm just going to snatch that up. And then we're going to slowly pull it around. Okay. All right, this looks great, y'all. It looks great. I'm going to weed the insides. All right, everything looks like it weeded pretty good. Don't see any other areas that needs to be weeded. So now what we're going to do, we're going to remove this from the mat. And just like with everything else, I'm going to flip it and then peel the mat away. And here is our design and we're going to get ready to place this on top of the shirt so now we're at the heat press and it's time to press the clear HTV first and today we are using this Bella canvas shirt that I got from Michaels for about two dollars it was on sale and so I snatched up quite a few of these because I love them and they had many colors available for sale so I am just prepping the shirt. We are setting the heat press at 320 degrees and we are only going to press it for about five seconds to tack down the clear vinyl. So first I just wanna give it a lint roll and a pre-press before we apply the clear HTV. So now I'm just gonna take our lint brush and we are going to give this a lint roll and this shirt is 100% cotton I'm just gonna press it pre-press for a little okay that's good now I'm going to get ready to apply our design and I'm just going to put the design right here and hopefully you can see the design and so you want it to go face down so this needs to be face down you can feel it if it's clear and you can't tell where it goes just feel it and so where you can feel it the cuts that is what needs to be face down onto your shirt Right, come on over here just a little bit. Up right there. And this shirt, this is an extra large shirt. So I do have heat tape, and we're going to be using a little bit of heat tape just to make sure that this stays nice and flat prior to pressing. So remember, we're only pressing this for five seconds.
All right, guys, so it's at 320 degrees. So I am just going to go ahead and press this for five seconds. All right, and so this is a cold peel. And so you don't want to peel it while it is still hot. All right, it's still cooling. I'm actually going to take this off of the press to let it cool. All right, so you want to make sure that you wait until this cools down completely. And I would pull it gently just to make sure that the adhesive stuck to your material really well. You don't want to pull it and rip it, okay? So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going very, very slowly. And I did have to kind of help it get off of the uh, transfer a little bit. But for the most part, it is coming off just fine. And we are going to line this up with my butterfly antennas. They did not seem to do so well. All right, I just had a little issue with the little piece there, but we're going to press it to see how it sticks. All right, guys, so we're all set, but I do want you to know that my little antennas didn't fare too well. So when doing these types of designs, you do want to make sure that your um, design doesn't really have too many small intricate cuts like this one, but we are going to go ahead and continue. Okay. And make sure that you follow all of the application instructions. So they suggest spraying certain materials down with rubbing alcohol and letting it, dry, letting it dry and then applying your material to the shirt. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how this matches up. And it looks like it's matching up very, very nicely. So I do like not having to guess where we need to place the design with it being able to cut the sublimation paper because you could have done this before without uh, cutting the sublimation paper you would just cut your vinyl and kind of piece it together but i like that this is now a lot easier to actually matching it up precisely so i'm gonna bring you guys in and then we just have where we lost our little antennas but it's okay All right, so you can kind of see the outline of the clear HTV and how this matches up pretty perfectly. Looking at those. And so you don't want to overpress the clear HTV because you don't want it to shrink. Remember, sometimes when you press your HTV too much, it can shrink and you want everything to fit exactly the way that it needs to fit. So that's what we're doing here. And this looks great, y'all. It looks great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get some heat tape and just tape this down. edges and our little antennas I'm not really going to worry about that antenna too much I'm just going to push it down right there all right so now we're ready to head back to the heat press and give this one final press the paper that I'm using today is honestly speaking sublimation paper and this paper does not bleed Okay, so you don't have to worry about this particular paper bleeding, but if you were using other paper, I would definitely suggest using butcher paper on top. All right, so now we're back underneath the press and it's time for us to press our design, but we need to raise that temperature to 380 degrees. So we're going to press it 380 degrees. Heat transfer warehouse suggests pressing this for 30 seconds. We'll give it about 40 seconds okay y'all so we are now ready to press and i'm going to place a piece of butcher paper on top you will want to also um i don't really have to because i'm using honestly speaking sublimation paper and her paper does not bleed um however i'm just doing it because in case you don't have it 
you should always put it, and I still usually put butcher paper on top. The ink that we're using today is my ink, Dynamic Ink, which can be found in my Etsy shop. A link is listed below in the description. So let's press. All right, so we are all done, and let's see how it came out. I can see some of the ink along the edges, so that's always good to see. Remember, this is very hot, and so you will want to have some heat gloves around. Oh, y'all, this is looking good so far. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off while it is hot. Wow. I just wanna rip it off at this point. Uh -oh. uh, this looks absolutely amazing, y'all. I'm going to go ahead bring it all in. Wow. This looks amazing. Amazing. Wow. So this is a close-up of our press. And y'all, it looks amazing. Amazing. And this is an extra large shirt. And look at that. Perfect. All right, y'all. So we are all done and... As y'all saw from earlier, our shirt came out amazing. I am really, really excited about the print then cut updates and upgrades. And this is an extra large shirt. And this image looks really nice onto this shirt. Previously, when you wanted to do print then cut, printing and cutting on an extra large shirt or getting an image to fit the size, you had to do a lot of piecing together of different things, cutting and slicing. You really don't have to do that any longer. This is an extra large shirt and this image is a great size for this shirt and I'm really excited about it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join Craftable Things there as well. I would love to see you all there. Please also let me know in the comments how excited you are about this upgrade and if you've had a chance to use it as well. But that's it for today, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.